This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. Um, we are starting a new unit, Chemical Bonding and Molecular Structures. The topics we are going to discuss, there will be first introduction, then causal lewis approach, octet rule, covalent bond, Lewis structure representation, formal charge, exception to the octet rule. So as introduction, we can say, why uh, we are discussing chemical bonding and after chemical bonding, there is molecular structure because to form molecules, there must be first some chemical bond formation. Then only the question of structure of molecule arises. But why chemical bonds are important? New compounds are constantly discovered and their features are explained by scientists. And this is done by existing theories and also the evolved theories. That is the new compounds that are formed, what type of bonds are present there, what is the feature of the bond, what is the nature of the bond, whether it can be easily broken or not, like this. All these factors that can be explained by scientists with the existing theories. But there is always with time evolution of theory. So when new theory is discovered, obviously the old theory that will be discarded and it will go on. Now the evolution of various theories of bonding that is related to the development in the structure of the atom and the electronic configuration of the elements and also the periodic table. So this evolution of theories that is based on what? That is basically based on structure of atom. Remember there is a uh, different unit structure of atom that we have discussed and also we know now what is electronic configuration and also the periodic table which is the last unit we have finished. They are all these things we have already covered. Now, based on all those things, that is structure of atom, electronic configuration of the atom, and uh, elements that are uh, present in the periodic table, what is their trend, everything we know now. Now, based on this, this evolution of theory, how that is the evolution is going on, that we can understand. As every system tends to be more stable, molecules, compounds, they always try to be more stable. So that is why chemical bonding is the natural way of lowering the energy of the system so that it can attain stability. So that is the purpose of bond formation. So when some bond is broken and new bonds are formed, that means that compared to the old bond, the new bonds that are formed, that will be more stable, fine? So as a definition, what we can say for chemical bond, the attractive force which holds various constituents. Now, these various constituents, not necessarily it has to be atom, it may be ions also. Two ions can be attracted to each other. So that is also a kind of bond. Two atoms may be attached to each other. That is also a type of bond. So in general, if we see it is the attractive force which can hold atoms, ions together in different chemical species, that attractive force is actually chemical bond. Fine. So these bonds, it will help to keep the atoms together in the resulting compound. Because if there is no bond, uh, compound will not be stable. So that is the purpose of this chemical bond. It is actually the attractive force. And because of this attractive force, the atoms are close to each other. That is, they are involved in bond or ions are close to each other. They are involved in bond. Now, some questions may arise that why do atoms combine? Suppose there are two atoms, A and B, they are combining to each other. So why they are combining? Because not necessarily it, has, it will always combine. There may be some atoms, they are not combining, but some atoms, they are combining to each other. Okay. So that is the question. Then the second question, why are only certain combinations are possible? So first question is why it combines? Now, once we know that, yes, it can, uh, it combines, but why it, uh, certain combinations are possible? So suppose there are uh, total four different types of elements, A, B, C, and D. So it may be that only B and C forming compounds to each other, but not with other two elements, A and D. But why these certain combinations are only possible? Then another question, why do some atoms combine while certain others do not? So these two are more or less same thing. And why do molecules possess definite shape? So all these questions uh, we can answer obviously if we once we cover this unit. Okay, so all these uh, answers of these questions that is that you can understand only after finishing this unit. So let's start. 
So to understand chemical bonding, there are basically different types of approach. As mentioned in the previous slide that uh, scientists use some theory to explain this bonding. But with evolution of theory, the old theory that will be discarded like this. So here, one, two, three, four, these four terms that you are seeing, four theories basically, it is basically as you are moving down, one, two, 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 three, three, two, four, it is more uh, advanced theory. So compared to Possel Lewis approach, BACPF theory more advanced, then VV theory uh, more advanced. Sometimes it is also called VBT, that is valence bond theory. Then molecular orbital theory, in short, it is called MOT. So gradually, as you are moving from one to two to three to four, it is becoming more and more advanced. So we will start from Cosell Lewis approach, which is the preliminary uh, theory compared to the other three. So in this approach, these two scientists, Cosell and Lewis, they actually individually they have given some idea. So, but why we are uh, taking these two names together? Because they were the first in giving a satisfactory explanation for the formation of chemical bond independently. So it is not that their theories are combined. It is independent theories that are, their approach are different, but it is based on inertness of novel gases. We know novel gases are inert because of their electronic configuration, which is fully filled, NS2, NP6. So all the other elements compared to novel gases, if you com compare, all of them will try to reach this type of configuration of novel gases. Then only they can be stable because it is a natural tendency of every species to become more and more stable. So compounds may be stable only if they are reaching this uh, inertness of, that is they are reaching the electronic configuration of novel gas. Suppose there is atom A and surrounding this a, that is, if we consider valence electron, suppose it is not like Nobel gas, NS2NP6. Suppose it is NS2NP4 or NS2NP5, that means it is try to gain two more electron or one more electron so that it can uh, reach the Nobel gas configuration. And how it can do so? It can do so by forming some bond with other elements, okay? By sharing some electrons or sometimes giving electrons or sometimes accepting electrons. All these things are possible, but Purpose is to reach the novel gas configuration. That is fixed. So that is it is written here. It is based on inertness of the novel gases. First will three, Lewis theory, because their approach are independent. So what about Lewis theory of chemical bonding? After that, you will see the other one. So according to this, an atom can be viewed as a positively charged kernel. Kernel means the nucleus plus the inner electron and outer shell that is where the valence electrons are present so you can uh, view or imagine atom like this now the outer shell can accommodate maximum of eight electrons only which occupy the corner of a cube and this cube we call uh, which surround the kernel because kernel is basically the nucleus plus the inner electron suppose this is nucleus there are some inner electrons i'm writing a very uh, simple structure and there is valence. So this is the outer shell. This one is the outer shell. Fine. So this inside part that is nucleus plus the inner electrons. This inside part is basically kernel. Now this kernel uh, and there is outer shell. So the outer shell you can imagine as if it is occupying the corners of a cube. Now in cube, how many corners are there? Obviously total eight corners are there. And we know that maximum capacity in S2 NP6, which is the novel gas configuration, where maximum capacity is eight electrons, right? Eight electrons. So as if these eight electrons, they are, uh, they, they, they are occupying the eight corners of a cube, fine? Right? And this cube is surrounding the current. So you have to imagine it in this way. Now the atoms having octet configuration, that is eight electrons in the outermost shell, thus symbolize a stable configuration when all the eight corners of the cube are occupied. Atoms can achieve this stable configuration only by forming chemical bonds with each other. Because except novel gases, none of the other elements, if you consider their electronic configuration is 
not NS2 NP6. There is some that is it is lesser than this NS2 NP1 or NP3 like this. So they will try to uh, reach this stable configuration of eight electrons. How? That is why they will form some bond with other atoms. Now this chemical bond can be formed in different way. It may be gaining of electron or losing of electron. Now when I'm saying gaining, obviously some other species must accept. There must be someone to accept it. Otherwise, what is the point of giving? So someone is losing, someone is gaining. Remember, when this is happening, then there is a uh, one type of bond formation, or in some cases it may be there is a proper sharing of electron. So it is a very simple picture if I draw. Suppose two atoms, A and B. A has given electron, so it is having some plus charge. B has accepted electron. So it will be having some negative charge. It will be having some negative charge. So there will be electrostatic interaction between this positive charge and negative charge. So this is one way chemical bond may be formed. Another way is, suppose A has given one electron and B has given one electron. Now they are sharing these two electrons together. That is another way to form bond. But whatever it is, their motto is to reach the Nobel gas configuration. Okay, that is the purpose. Now, there is some uh, Lewis symbols we use, that is according to this approach, when we write any atom, uh, there is some specific way to write it, that is known as Lewis symbol. But what is its significance? In the formation of a molecule, only the outer shell electrons take part. That is when they are forming some bonds, they are involving in some chemical combination. Obviously, the outer shell electrons are taking part. So that is why we are always giving significance to the valence electron, not the inner electrons. And uh, for example, helium, uh, sorry, he used specific notations for this purpose, which is Lewis symbol, which will represent this valence electron. So suppose when I'm writing the atom A. Suppose it has two valence electron, so you can write it like uh, dots like this, fine? So here you can see some examples. Lithium, its valence electron is only one. Remember the electronic configuration? First, what is atomic number? Atomic number is three. So electronic configuration, one is two, two is one. So two is one means what? Valence electron is only one, which is written like this. Then for nitrogen, which is from group 15, and remember for P block elements, I have already mentioned it in the uh, periodic table unit that uh, when you have any P block elements, you know the group, then the last digit of the group, that is if it is 15, the last digit is basically uh, the valence electron. So 5 will be the valence electron for nitrogen. You can see these five electrons, how it is drawn. For oxygen, it is from group 16, so 6 will be the valence electron. This is 5. This is 1. And neon. It is noble gas. So 8 electrons. Fine. 2H2 to P6. Now, when uh, we already know what is valence electron. Now, when we are talking about valency, it may be directly equal to the valence electron in some cases. For example, lithium, sodium. Valence is 1. Valence electron is also one, but sometimes it may not be so. It may be eight minus the number of dots also. That is, either it is equal to the number of dots, basically it is directly equal to the valence electron because what I mean by dot, I mean by dot, the valence electrons. So sometimes it is directly equal to the number of valence electron or number of dots, but sometimes it may be eight minus the number of dots. For example, oxygen, valence electron six, so if you uh, consider 8 minus 6, it will be give you 2. So that is why oxygen, the most common valence is minus 2. Okay, so in this way, we can, uh, if we know the valence electron, we can also understand uh, the valency. So it is not that you will simply remember it. There is a logic also. Because why we are saying that it is 8 minus number of dots or 8 minus valence electron? Because oxygen, outermost there is 2p4 so if it gains somehow two electron more and it will become to have two negative charge 
then only it can reach the configuration of neon okay so that is why 8 minus 6 2 it requires two more electron okay now what about the other uh, theory Cosell's theory of chemical bonding to achieve noble gas configuration ns 2 p 6 though for helium that is not possible it is the only noble gas where the question of uh, this ns 2 p 6 doesn't arise because it has configuration of 2s2 okay so to achieve noble gas configuration in h2 p 6 except helium halogens form negatively charged ions so halogens they are in group 17 remember just in the left hand side of the noble gases noble gas group 18 and the halogens are group 17 right so they will form negatively charged ions by gaining an electron and alkali metals they will form positively charged ions by losing electrons just take the example of lithium if it losses electrons 1s2 2s1 it will reach sorry i have written it to it will be one for helium so if lithium losses one electron it will reach the noble gas configuration of helium 1s2 fine so that is for alkali metals so these two things are possible these two are actually the two extreme now the resulting oppositely charged ions that is one you will get from halogen just take the example of any halogen suppose chlorine so chlorine having outermost configuration 3s2 3p5 when it is gaining one more electron it will become 3p6 right similarly if you take sodium electronic configuration 3s1 after neon but when it will lose electron it will reach the configuration of neon when it is plus that means now both sodium and as well as cl minus both are reaching the noble gas configuration by uh, gaining and losing uh, that is for the chlorine it is gain for sodium it is loss now there is formation of cation so this resulting oppositely charged ions are held together by strong force of electrostatic attraction and this is known as chemical bond also known as electrovalent bond i'm talking about this type of bond where positive charge negative charge present and then there is electrostatic interaction remember in lewis approach this type of things we have not discussed there we have simply mentioned that there are some dots and there is uh, sharing of electron okay basically in lewis theory not just sharing both things are mentioned fine though mostly we talk about sharing of electron but when it is cosell's approach it is mainly the electrostatic interaction as if one has lost electron and one atom another atom gained electron but in case of lewis theory as if it is sharing so these two are as if uh, two different types but now if you combine these two idea causal theory lewis theory it will give you a overall picture so in according to causal theory sodium before uh, losing electron it has configuration neon 3s1 and then it is becoming neon and chlorine after gaining electron it has now configuration 3s2 3p6 which is the configuration of r1 so in this way you get this electrovalent bond between sodium and chloride which is also known as ionic bond okay but suppose if it is fluorine uh, fluorine two fluorine atoms total number of electrons around that is uh, valence electron is seven fine so out of this seven valence electron only one electron it is sharing with another fluorine and rest of the six electron that will remain as lone pair. So in this case, there is sharing of electron. It is not that one is giving electron, one is losing, uh, sorry, giving, another one is accepting. It is not like that. Here, uh, both fluorine, they are now sharing this electron. And why they are sharing? Because only after sharing, now surrounding each fluorine, if you consider, just look at the left-hand side fluorine. Surrounding fluorine, how many electrons are there? Two, two, two. And in the bond also there is two so total eight electrons similarly if you consider the right hand side fluorine now also surrounding this right hand side fluorine there is total eight electrons so ultimately the purpose is to reach 
this eight electron configuration just like Nobel wish. Now, whether you have sharing of electron, that is one approach, or you have some cation anion and there is electrostatic interaction between them, there is another approach. But common purpose is to reach eight electron configuration. Fine. Now, octet rule, very important. Octet means the word term we are getting from the number eight. So eight number, it is important because when there is chemical bond formation, uh, ultimate motto is to reach this eight electron configuration. So Cossels and Lewis, they developed an important theory of chemical combination between atoms known as electronic theory of chemical bonding. This theory leads to the octet rule and the rule states that the atoms transfer or share two approach. Remember transfer means how NaCl form we have just seen in the previous slide. That is actually transfer, transfer of electron from chlorine, sorry, from sodium towards chlorine. Or it may be sharing of electron that you have seen in case of fluorine moly. So the atoms transfer or shared electron so that all atoms involved in chemical bonding, they can obtain eight electrons in their outer shape or valence shape. So that is octet rule. Now types of chemical bonds, there are mainly two chemical bonds, uh, two important type of bonds, covalent bond and ionic. Though I will not say that it is limited only to this, but these two are the most uh, significant, though there are some other type of bonds that will be discussed probably in some other unit. Other bonds means there is metallic bond, there is coordinate bond. Coordinate bond is also there in this unit according to syllabus, but I'll discuss that not now. It will be later. That is actually has some similarity with covalent bond. But here we will focus only these two types of bonds, covalent and ionic bond. Though when you will deal with actual molecules, actual bonds, you will see that it may be uh, having some nature in between these two. That is, it is not purely covalent bond. It is not purely ionic bond. It is something in between. But there is also examples where there is pure ionic bond or purely covalent bond. So everything is possible. So the chemical bonds can be classified based on the nature of interaction between the bonded atoms. So if it is sharing of electron, it is covalent bond. If it is transfer of electron, it is ionic bond. Now generally metals react with non-metals uh, by ionic bond formation that you have seen in case of NaCl, right? So where Na is reacting with the non-metal Cl, it is becoming plus, it is becoming minus, and there is some interaction between these two. So that is ionic bond. And covalent bonds are present in compounds formed by non-metals that you have seen in case of diatomic molecule chlorine, or you can take the example of oxygen, nitrogen, uh, chlorine, like this, okay? So these are the two major type of chemical bond, but remember some in-between nature is also possible. And most of the molecules are basically like this. It is not purely covalent or purely ionic. Because purely covalent is only possible when you have this type of uh, non-metals, diatomic molecules like F2, Cl2, O2, N2. And you will have purely ionic bonds only when one of the atom is a very metallic in nature. I mean alkali metal or alkaline earth metal, group 2. And another atom is halogen. So only you have this type of extreme groups, that is group 1, 2, or group uh, 17, 16. These are the extreme. Then you will have ionic compounds. But if you consider the in-between elements, obviously, you will have the nature of the bond, which is not purely covalent or purely ionic, something in between. But these two are the major types. Once you understand what is covalent bond, what is ionic bond, then only you will be uh, next you can understand what is this in between nature that is not purely covalent or purely ionic but we'll come to that point later not now so as we have uh, seen in case of lewis we consider these eight electrons as if it is present in the eight corners of the cube here if you want to know how uh, chlorine this diatomic molecule is formed like this then 
consider individual chlorine as if it is in this uh, all these eight uh, electrons that are present like this eight corners now when this it is a sharing electron basically a seven electron because see this part is vacant because chlorine has a total seven valence electron this is also seven so this is vacant because total seven electron now when these two points will be uh, connected these two points will be connected now surrounding each chlorine as if there is eight electrons so though it is uh, purely by Lewis approach, but uh, in daily life, dealing with this type of cubes, drawing them, it is difficult. Okay, so that is why Langmuir refined the Lewis postulations by altering the idea of stationary cubical arrangement of the octet with the term covalent bond. So now it is refined by Langmuir. So we, uh, though here you can see this cube uh, structure, but we do not use this, okay? Because it is uh, difficult to uh, draw every time this type of cube. So we represent it in a different way. So there is basically Lewis dot structure. Now, what are the conditions for writing the Lewis dot structure? Sharing of an electron pair between atoms results in the formation of covalent bond that we already know remember two fluorine how they are sharing they are one electron and ultimately there is a pair of electron between them and individual fluorine if you consider there is eight electrons around them. now during bond formation each bond consists of two electrons so if i am saying there is only one bond it means there is a pair of electrons that is two electrons if there are two bonds there will be total four electrons like this per bond two electrons each bond consists of two electrons contributed by each one of the combining atom. So A giving one electron, B giving one electron, and then there is sharing. Okay? Like this. This is covalent bond. By the mutual sharing of electrons, now each atom attains octet configuration in its balance shape. Here we have this chlorine. So we will not use this type of cubical arrangement. Rather, we will use this type of Lewis uh, dot structure. So chlorine, if you consider its electronic configuration, uh, then after neon, neon is having total 10 electron and chlorine atomic number is 17. So seven more electron, you will place it like this. After neon, 3s2, 3p5. So total valence electron, 3s2 tp5 it is 2 plus 5 7 so you can see total 7 electrons surrounding chlorine now this electron and this electron if it is shared now this is the sharing region now individually surrounding chlorine there will be total <coughs> 8 electrons so this symbol that you are seeing here it is known as electron dot symbol and the structure of the compound so in the left hand side we have two individual chlorine atom, but in the right hand side, it is already bond formation. It has, it happened, and we are getting diatomic chlorine molecule. You can write it like this, or you can draw it like this. And the bond is actually we can see. Fine. One more example. So in the previous uh, structure. You can see these electrons they have not taken part in bond formation right <coughs> so these electron they will be called non-bonding electron or you can say lone pair so how many lone pairs present on individual chlorine total three lone pairs okay that means six non-bonding electrons are there now consider another molecule hydrogen chloride very common hydrogen it has uh, total how many electrons only one because it's valence electron one and chlorine is having total 3 is to 3p 5 total 7 so here these two red electron they are actually the electrons of the that are present in the bond so they are bonding electrons the two red electron 
they are bonding electrons out of these two electron one is given by hydrogen another one is by chlorine but these six electrons of chlorine they are not part of bond so we will call them non bonding electrons how many non bonding electrons total six but in terms of pair lone pair because they are lone they have not taken part in sharing or uh, that is they are not part of bond so they are lone pairs so total three lone pair three lp but in terms of electron this total six electron because per lone pair it is two electron the shared electrons are called bonding electrons or bonding electron pair and the other electrons on any of the atoms for hydrogen there is no non bonding electron because it has only one electron one is one it is already part of bond no more nothing is left and the other electrons on any of the atoms that are not part of covalent bond you will call them non bonding electrons or lone pair lp some more examples methane molecule remember it has formula ch4 so there are total four carbon hydrogen bond now hydrogen it has only one electron so it will give that electron in the covalent bond and carbon has total four valence electron because outermost configuration is 2s2 2p2 so carbon will use its four valence electron in this bond 1 2 3 4 and hydrogen will use individually if i see for this total four hydrogen number one hydrogen one electron second hydrogen one electron like this but surrounding carbon now there are how many electrons just focus on this red circle surrounding carbon total eight electrons so octet is complete for hydrogen octet not possible but for hydrogen it can maximum reach duplet duplet means it is just like the term octet you use octet for eight but you will use the term duplet for two because maximum one is two cannot be more than that so as if uh, for hydrogen point of view of hydrogen also as if uh, it has reached its maximum uh, next electron nobel gas configuration of helium so now it is also stable so in this way uh by draw when you are drawing lewis dot structure you can understand how many uh, bonding electrons are there non bonding electrons are there whether octet is fulfilled or not all these informations you can get right next we will see bromine diatomic molecule br2 or i can write br single bond pair okay so bromine it has outermost halogen so it has seven electron now out of the seven electron only one electron it is part of the bond okay so see here only the non bonding electrons are shown three lone pairs but here we also have two more electron like this so individually if you consider this is the overlapping zone individually if you consider both left hand side right hand side bromine both the bromine atoms now they are having eight electrons surrounding them then we have water molecule oxygen it has total 2s2 2p4 six valence electrons okay out of these six valent electrons only two electrons are used these two non bonding so how many lone pair two lone pair one lone pair this is second lone pair okay first so now individually if you see from the point of view of hydrogen it has reached its maximum uh, electron count two electron duplet complete for oxygen there are total eight electrons right so this type of mutual sharing of one or more pair of electrons it may be one electron it may be more than one because here you cannot see any double bond all these examples there are only single bond but it may be more than one also but whatever it is this type of mutual sharing of one or more pair of electrons in this case it is only one but it will be more also one or more pair of electrons between two combining atoms it will lead to the formation of chemical bond and that is known as covalent bond so all these are examples of covalent bonds okay
how we will do the Lewis uh, structure representation. That is uh, simply when it is simple atoms uh, that we have seen. That is individual. If you write lithium, only one dot. If you write oxygen, there will be total six electron. You will write like this. But suppose for large molecules, already three examples we have seen. But for large molecules, how to do that? What is the process that we'll see here? With the example of nitric acid. Nitric acid has formula HNO3, one hydrogen atom, one nitrogen atom, and total three oxygen. Now, individually, first you have to know what is the valence electrons. For hydrogen, it is one because it is having configuration one is one. For oxygen, it is two s two two p four valence configuration total valence electron six, and for nitrogen, it is two s two two p three. So valence electron total five. But how many oxygen total three? It will be as if 18. So if you add 1 plus 5 plus 18, it will be total 24 electrons. That should be uh, the part of bond formation. Or it may be there may be some lone pairs also that is not bonding electron. But it will not be more than these 24 or less than these 24. Now, which atom is making bond with which atom? That is also important to know. This minimum idea you have to have. Otherwise, you will not be able to draw the structure. Okay. So, what is the central atom in this case? Here, the central atom is nitrogen, and you have to draw the skeletal structure. Skeletal structure is uh, means that uh, which atom you will connect with which atom. Suppose instead of writing this, if you are writing H, N, O, 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 this is absolutely wrong. So this minimum idea you have to have, okay? H, O, N, then N again, O, and O. That means if nitrogen is the central atom, it will make bond with oxygen, three oxygen, all the three oxygen. But there is no direct bond with hydrogen, but hydrogen has bond with oxygen. So this is the skeletal structure, the basic structure, the position of the atoms. Next, you can draw single like because at least one bond obviously will be there that is a minimum thing you can easily do this and then distribute the remaining electron for each atom that is number three number two is clear draw a single bond because at least uh, one bond must be there whether there is uh, any double bond or not that question comes later first you can simply draw blindly at one bond now, when I have drawn one bond, obviously, each bond, there are two electrons. So, how many bonds? Total four. That means you have already used eight electrons. How many left? 24. So, 16 more electrons left. Remaining electron? 16. Now, remaining electron, how to place it? Uh, that depends on which it is not that arbitrary. You have to follow the logic. It obviously it will be on oxygen. Why? Because oxygen, it is having maximum valence electron. So the extra electrons, which is not part of bond, it will remain as a lone pair. So these dots that you are seeing, that is actually lone pair. So how many are there? Two, four, five, three more. Okay, so eight lone pair, that means eight into two, 16. Okay, now at a first glance, it, uh, some question may arise in your mind that how to know these lone pairs will be on nitrogen or not. Gradually, the more you will practice it, uh, there will, you will get the idea. It's not be, something very tough, okay. Now, one thing you notice that nitrogen, it has total five valence electrons but it has used only three electrons in this bond. If there are a single bond, that means two more electrons are still left. But if you observe these two oxygen, here as if all the six electrons are there, it has as if uh, it has not used any of these electrons, but how it is possible? So see, actually there is a double bond with one oxygen. Verify whether all the atoms have octet configuration or not, Obviously, that is not possible for hydrogen, so except hydrogen. So it must be 
there must be some double bond now once this extra bond you have retained which is basically pi bond pi bond sigma bond uh, details we will discuss not now but just see here just to use electrons of oxygen here we have to write this bond now see how many lone pairs are there only two lone pairs that means out of six electrons two electrons are involved in this two double bond and in case of nitrogen it has total four bonds surrounding it that means uh, eight electrons so for nitrogen octet is complete right and this oxygen all the uh, six electrons it is still there that means in this bond between n and o that is the vertical bond i am using a different color in this bond both these electrons are given by nitrogen uh, this is something new you are seeing here but uh, here i have to mention this uh, extra information this is this type of bond is known as coordinate bond you know what is covalent coordinate bond is also like covalent but the difference is when it is covalent one electron given by a another one is given by b and then there is proper shear but when it is covalent bond sorry i'm saying that when it is coordinate bond now what happens this electron between a and b both are given by only one so this is the difference once it is given by a because there is b is not giving anything only a is giving once it has given don't think that a has given so a will be having some positive charge no it is not like ionic bond it has given but now they are both equally sharing this electron so that is the difference between covalent bond and coordinate so this bond is basically coordinate bond so here nitrogen has given two electrons to this oxygen and this oxygen suppose this is one oxygen this is two this is three just focus on number three oxygen it has all these six valence electrons still there but nitrogen has used five of its electrons and in this bond it has used two electrons because it is coordinate bond it is not covalent and whether there will be any charge or not that is plus charge we know that if some of you may have some idea that nitrogen is having positive charge in hno3 one of the oxygen is negative but how these charges are coming uh, that we can understand after discussing formal charge right now just focus on the fact whether octet is fulfilled or not so individually if you see hydrogen two electron fine then number one oxygen surrounding there are total two non bonding uh, pair that means four electrons already present and in this bond there are total four so octet is complete for this nine oxygen come to nitrogen it has also full octet how it is because surrounding nitrogen how many electrons four here two here two here that means eight and for this oxygen number two four electrons non bonding but surrounding this oxygen total eight octet complete for number 3 oxygen also octet complete so individually just check whether octet configuration is fulfilled or not okay so that in this way the structure we can draw some more examples so you have already seen a single bond but there may be double bond also in the just previous structure you have seen there is double bond between number 2 hydrogen and uh, the nitrogen atom okay when combining atom share uh, two or three electron pairs when it is two electron pair it will be double bond when it is three electron pair it will be triple bond so that is the definition and uh, in general together you can say it is multiple bond that is any bond which is not one uh, more than one you can call them double bond or multiple bond so here we have carbon dioxide and this is nitrogen diatomic molecule very common so this is the representation individually if you see nitrogen atom there are total six electrons so surrounding individually if you see octet complete they are also octet complete then oxygen uh, sorry carbon surrounding carbon how many electrons eight 
then if you consider right hand side oxygen 8 electrons then this oxygen also 8 electrons fine a little complex example sulfur trioxide so3 so here we have this type of bond so what you will do just you will take individual atoms sulfur valence electron 6 oxygen is also valence electron 6 but how many oxygens are there 3 so it will be 18 so total 6 plus 18 it will be 24 electrons so 24 electrons you have to place so here you can see 24 electrons 3 lone pair that means 6 3 lone pair 6 2 lone pair 4 and there are a total 4 bonds that means 8 electrons so 8 and 6 plus 6 plus 4 it is total 24 electrons that you can see in this structure if you are not drawing the uh, straight line bond then you have to instead you can write this type of electrons but uh, bonds if you write that is uh, less confusing but whatever it is if you want to draw and check it yourself whether uh, all these 24 electrons are fulfilled or not like this similarly dinitrogen pentoxide n2o5 when you will draw the Lewis structure basic minimum idea you should have that whether there is uh, nn bond present or not what is the relative position of the atoms that is a basic skeletal structure you have to know okay once you know this then how many nitrogen total two nitrogen each nitrogen five so it will be 10 electrons and there are total five oxygen so six into five 30 so there will be total 40 electrons that must be fulfilled in this way now whether there is any negative charge or not in these molecules that you will see later okay once we know what is a uh, formal charge then you will be able to understand whether there is any charge uh, over nitrogen oxygen it is present or not okay so what is formal charge sometimes the lewis structure for many molecules that we draw by in this way that we have just seen it will give rise to more than one acceptable structure so acceptable structure means it must have all for all the atoms octet must be complete except hydrogen where it is only two but suppose for the same molecule you have drawn two different structure and in both the structure all the atoms they are having octet complete then how we will decide that which structure is the actual representation correct representation so suppose we have carbon dioxide though we have already seen how its structure is but step by step if we see this is a basic skeletal structure carbon is having bond with oxygen it is not bond between two oxygen okay so this is a basic skeletal structure then just place one single bond and then you can uh, arrange all the rest of the electrons according uh, first you have to calculate how many valence electrons uh, so total number of electrons you have to fulfill like this now if you draw this in this way surrounding carbon eight electrons are not fulfilled so that is why now you have to put more bond now this structure number one you have already seen right but why not if i say what is the problem with structure one instead of giving two double bonds both side of carbon suppose i am giving triple bond in one side and i am giving single bond other side structure one octet complete that we already know in the previous slide we have seen but what about structure two here also let's check whether octet complete or not total three bonds six electrons that means left hand side oxygen surrounding it total how many electrons total eight then if you consider carbon which is the middle one then surrounding it how many electrons this is also eight then come to the last oxygen surrounding it also eight so for all eight electrons here also eight electrons for structure one as well as two then why we are not giving significance to this structure why we are accepting this structure what is the answer of this question okay how to decide now to answer this question you have to check the formal charge basically you have to calculate the formal charge that is very simple formula so to find an answer for this question 
that which one is the actual representation or you can say the best representation we need to know the formal charge for individual atom in the Lewis structure now once you have calculated the formal charge by applying the formula obviously i'll show that once you know that you have to write the formal charge over the atoms and then you will be able to know that which one you should accept lesser is the formal charge suppose in one structure you are getting zero formal charge that means no charge is there another structure you are getting some uh, positive charge or negative charge obviously the neutral one will be preferred okay so which formula we will use very simple formal charge fc that is equal to v which is number of valence electron so for co2 uh, you have to do this calculation three times for left hand side oxygen for middle carbon for right hand side oxygen now for fast structure both the oxygens are equivalent because both are having double bond with carbon but for the second structure both the oxygens are not equivalent so in that case formal charge will be different for these two oxygen but formula you have to do this calculation then three times for all the three atoms but for first structure you have to do it two times so this capital n means number of non bonding valence electron so if it is only one lone pair capital n value will be 2 if it is two lone pair its value will be 4 like this and b means b for bonding electrons and n for non bonding v for valence and fc is formal charge now b total number of electrons shared in the bond and you know per bond two electrons but individually if you consider the atom has given only one electron so that is why b by 2 after sharing it is getting two electron from the bond but individually if you see it has given only one so that is why you have to divide b by 2 now once you know the total non bonding electron total bonding electron this summation you have to subtract from the valence electron so if it is more than v there will be some negative charge that means excess electrons are present which is uh, excess compared to valence and if n plus v by 2 this quantity is lesser than v that means now it will have some positive charge and if it is equal it will have zero charge okay so definition we can say the formal charge of an atom in a molecule or it may be i or not necessary it is molecule it is a difference between the number of valence electron which is v of that particular atom obviously in an isolated state and the number of electrons assigned to that atom in the lewis structure so number of electrons assigned to that atom in the lewis structure it means this capital n plus v by 2 because these are the number of electrons that are assigned to this atom not in isolated state in isolated state you know what is the valence electron suppose isolated nitrogen you know there are a total five electrons five valence electrons so v is five but when it is actually present in the molecule or ion how many electrons are assigned to it it may be that uh, number of electrons assigned it is more than v then there will be some excess negative charge if it is lesser than the v there will be positive charge okay so if uh, n plus v by 2 for nitrogen suppose it is 4 then there will be some positive charge if it is 5 minus 6 there will be some negative charge like this okay so that is the definition now come to this structure here both the structures are there and you can see some charges are also mentioned right but how to calculate that you have to check so for fast structure all these atoms value of formal charge is zero and the second structure it is plus one zero minus one so that is why this is <coughs> sorry so this is discarded okay but we'll see the calculation so formal charge for the structure one this is structure number one calculation for the carbon total valence electron four non-bonding electrons are not present because carbon has used all the valence electrons and total number of bonding electrons surrounding carbon eight so you have to divide eight by two or simply just rather than following blindly this formula 
the more you will practice you can easily understand that directly in in place of b by 2 here you can write four because there are a total four bonds so obviously a uh, total number of electrons shared and uh, it is that is always double the number of bonds so if there are total eight electrons it is better directly you can write four rather than writing uh, eight but it is up to you the more you will practice uh, you can do this calculation easily so in this way you are getting zero and for the oxygen both oxygens are uh, similar in, in environment so it is six valence electron non bonding electron four because two lone pairs and total number of bonds surrounding oxygen two so directly you can write two here or if you are considering bonded electrons then it is 4 by 2 so this is the way you will do the calculation for the structure one for structure two the formal charge on carbon four again no non bonding electrons 8 by 2 so it is again zero but for singly bonded oxygen that means this right hand side oxygen i'm writing rar and this is left hand side oxygen i'm writing here l so formal charge for right hand side 6 minus non bonding electron see total four three lone pairs so capital n is 6 only one bond is there so directly you can write one or 2 by 2 so what you are getting 6 plus 1 6 minus 7 it is minus 1 similar is the calculation for left hand side oxygen when non bonding electrons total 2 total number of bonds 3 So six by two, so you are getting plus. So in this way, you can do the calculation. Fine. So if I start this, it will take some time. That is, uh, in this slide, we will basically see that after calculation of formal charge, how to choose the structure, which is the actual representation of, which is the base representation. That will be discussed in the next class. We are ending here. Thank you for listening.